Thanks for tuning in to Bourbon Drop. I'm your host, Myron. Today, we've got Weller Single Barrel on the channel. Now, I know that this bottle is highly sought after. It was won in the Virginia ABC Lottery by Ryan. Shout out my coworker, Ryan, man. He, he told me I could use this bottle for a review, so it is on loan. It is not one of my bottles. I am not going to let his opinion of this bottle sway me. He told me that the reason why it is down this low is because he, he's been giving out samples because he is not a big fan of it. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, I think it was Troy and Laura from Baker Drinks, that this is pretty much a single barrel of this. Bottom drop, bottom drop. I heard a few channels, I think it was Laura and Troy from Baker Drinks that said that this right here is pretty much a single barrel version of the Special Reserve. So I'm, I'm kind of going to put them side by side tonight. That's why I've got a little glint over there. Um, you know, we all chase Buffalo Trace, Taters, whatever. They make some extraordinary products in the William Lou Rue Reller and the uh, George T. Stagg. And then they make some mediocre products. And a lot of the mediocre products are still heavily chased on the shelf because of things like Pappy. So, you know, we do play a part in the uh, scarcity of some of these bottles. You know, going to a store and only being limited to buying one because you don't know when you're gonna see it again. Look, I am a big fan of Eagle Rare, but I, I don't sit there and buy two and three and four. I mean, because one, they're limited and two, I like it a lot, but I'm not gonna always just try and have backups of something that I think is just, you know, it's a good 90 proof pour. Let's get into the nose of this before I get onto a more of a rant. Oh, wow. That's a nice nose. That is that Buffalo Trace signature cherry slash grape nose. Oh. A little bit of oak in the background. And that's all, man. Um, but you know, I, like I said, I don't want to rant. People stand in line for blends. Yes, we all want to have the nice horsey tops, collect all the letters, things like that. So those bottles are highly sought after. But honestly, it is no reason for this thing to be sitting in the store at $59.99 like you saw in my last video. Buffalo Trace makes good products. I'm not going to say all their products are crap. But there's no reason for the Elmer T. Lee that I got behind me uh, to be... $2.99, $3.99, $3.49 when you go into some of these stores. To me, it is just not worth it. Is it an okay pour? Yes, it's an okay pour, but I don't think it's worth $3.99. Um, I don't think any of these three bottles, well, these two haven't had that one yet, but I doubt it, are worth $3.99, $2.99, $1.99, but those are unfortunately the prices that you see them going for on secondary. Let's get into the palette. That's kind of tasty. <laughs> That's kind of tasty. I'm picking up a little bit of grape. It had a little bit of a citrus, like what I like <clears throat> that citrus that I pick up in Buffalo Trace, because pretty much all of the Sazerac lineup coming from that Buffalo Trace distillery has that grapey note, but Buffalo Trace is the only one that kind of sets apart to me and has that citrus note. I am picking up a little bit of citrus in this thing. I am picking up that grape slash cherry. Oh, this thing is good. Let me, let me, <laughs> wow. It, su it surprised me. Let me uh, go back into the palette one more time. All right. A little bit of spice. That's got a nice amount of spice on the back. That grape stays on the mid of the palette, man. It's more of like black pepper in the back. You get this spicy note that hits the tongue and then it's like black pepper all across the back. There's not a lot of sweetness up front. You know, sometimes when I drink a bourbon, it'll be super sweet up front, then it'll kind of mellow out in the mid and then get charry in the back. 
this is just kind of like a nice light cherry slash grape um just on the mid and then it's that black pepper and that spice you know it's not it's not super complex i do like it let me put it side by side with one that i don't one that i don't like let's see how this turns out because if you guys have been members of the channel for a while you know that huh, i am not the biggest fan of the green label weller um, it is a it is an okay drink. I did sip some the other night because I knew that I was getting this bottle So um, it's actually seemed like it opened up some I started to pick up a lot more vanilla. Let's see if that holds true tonight. Let's get into the nose A little bit of oak And some of that great note that I tell you guys that I get in a lot of the Buffalo Trace products It's there, but it just seems hidden Yeah, I'm picking up more oak. It just smells fresh. It smells bright. And like a light grape note. Let's go into the palette. Yeah, see that's 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 different. That's more bland. It's it's not coming across the palette with much more flavor. Uh it's just it's got a nice nice vanilla sweetness to it but it doesn't it, it's it's not wowing me at all i really like this one right here this single barrel would i pay those ridiculous prices for it no but i really do like this single barrel the green label just isn't standing up to it i don't know now this does come in at 97 proof so those seven proof points could be helping this bourbon out but then again we all know single barrels they're all going to taste different from each other. Of course, this is a batch product and it is a little more watered down coming in at 90 proof. So, you know, sometimes 90 proof is going to be a little boring on the palate. That is kind of how I feel about the Green Label Weller. It is just, it's very bland on the palate. It doesn't offer a lot. Um, this one right here at 97 proof, man, I am actually really liking this thing. It kind of took me by surprise. Um, I'm going to sit this over here and we're going to get into the breakdown. Is it worth the chase? Ah, you know I gotta say no. The reason why I say it's not worth the chase is because the time you spend chasing this weeded bottle of bourbon, even though it is offering some really nice uh, cherry slash grape notes with that black pepper, it is not super complex. I think that you can find other weeded products out there that are better than this instead of standing in line somewhere all night. If you win it in a raffle and get to pay retail for it, great. Uh, I didn't ask out Ryan how much he paid for it, but if you do get it that way, then by all means get it. Um, yeah, is it worth over retail? Like I said, I did not ask Ryan how much he paid. If this is a 60 to $65 bottle, um, because of the rarity of it, I might might go 15 up to my 30. I know I'm not going to get it for that. If this was like a $60 bottle, if it's a $35, $40 bottle, I'd go my 30 all day. I did this one. I really liked. I liked a lot, but it's a single barrel, so it is going to be a gamble. Um, would I give it to a new bourbon drinker? I think 97 proof is right on the money. I think I would definitely give that to a new bourbon drinker. I think that a new bourbon drinker, something like 90, would probably be more in their wheelhouse. And when I say new bourbon drinkers, guys, I do mean new to the game bourbon drinkers. I don't mean guys who have uh, drank bourbon for three to six months. That's To me, that's still new in the game, but that is not a new bourbon drinker. So 97 proof. You know, I would test their palate with this thing. Um, and then if they if they thought it was a little too spicy, some of those black pepper notes, I'd back them back down to this. Uh, will it always be on the bar? Of course, you guys know that it is on loan, so it will not always be on the bar. If I do happen to uh, run across a bottle at a reasonable price, I will pick it up and I would try and preserve it to keep it on the bar. And with that being said, let the whiskey flow. Never run out unless you're headed to a drop. Till next time.